Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oscar Buzz. We are here reviewing Blonde. Um, Trevor here, joined by Thomas as always, and this is a lot of movie. It's been talked about mm -hmm. a lot. We probably won't contribute that much to the conversation. No, no. It isn't good. No, no. I think it's that's not, putting it like It's not a good movie. Um, I do think that there is a bit to like about it, just personally. There there's like, elements there. there. There are pieces of this movie I like. However, as a whole, as a completed piece of film, it's not good. It's not good. Mm -hmm. uh, I provided better alternatives for female-led biopics over the past couple of years in Spencer and Jackie. Let Pablo Lorraine do anything. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Thomas, opening thoughts. Opening thoughts, well. Um, I mean, it's very hard to sort of quantify sort of opening thoughts to a film like this. Um, but uh, let's start with Anna Domus, because... She's great. She is great. Uh, pretty undeniably great. Um, her accent sometimes is a bit questionable, but it's fine because she is a very charismatic actress and she does like sort of bring you through the film enough to keep it from being like really boring. Um, actually, I don't know if the film could be boring with the amount of stuff it's sort of doing. But it is what I needed a break midway through watching it because there was just sort of so much stuff that was going on. Uh, most of it for me not working. Uh, I'll just clarify this. And I, I didn't really like this very much at all. All of the stuff it was doing in terms of artistic wise just sort of drew me out of the movie. I was like, well, why are you doing this? Why are you constantly changing the aspect ratios? Why are you constantly changing the color things? And I will say this made this would make for a great trailer. And it did. We had a great trailer where it showed all the beautiful shots, uh, but it didn't have to show any of the story because that's what trailers do. Um, the problem is when you watch a film and there's all the story elements and it's very exploitative in the way it's sort of depicting Marilyn Monroe as a person. It's not really depicting her as a person, more a sort of canvas for themes to just be thrown at her. Like fame, yes. Sexism in Hollywood, yes. Anti-abortion stuff, uh, yes. And like some of them are nice, interesting themes to explore. Um, some of them are more questionable and... Abortion stuff, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty questionable political message, which we talked about before the show. We don't know if it was deliberate. We we hope not. Yeah, um, get it but it is, yeah, you know, it is by default comes across as quite aggressively anti-abortion. Um, yeah, so yeah just, like... Not, yeah. not to cut you off, but people will say, like, it was just a movie, <laughs> enjoy it. And I just, and we'll say this for all of, this goes for all of our reviews. Movies are not made in a vacuum. Movies are made to reflect what's going on in the world and they have an impact on what is going on in the world. If you make a movie that is very explicitly anti-abortion right after there is a lot of like, like Roe v. Wade and stuff, that is yeah. a problem. Even if it was not intentional, which again, we'll get into, like read <coughs> the room, Andrew. Yeah, like yeah. this is <laughs> does not come across well. Yeah, so. there were also a couple of scenes that were laughably bad. I won't go into spoilers into exactly the sort of which ones, but oh, there are a couple of scenes that are just like, yeah, you're just <laughs> like, movie. yeah, and, and the weird, um, the weird one where he's like sort of walking upsteads and it's just like doing a steady cam handheld shot, and it's just like, what? Why are you doing that? There is, okay, put it this way, there's that. a. I didn't there's, <laughs> really? What was the purpose? Now that's the point I'm trying to get ahead. There's a lot of funny. shots and stuff there. there. There's no purpose behind it. It just yeah. feels like it's art for art's sake. I mean, and this like, is... there are a few things I hate more than that, where it's just like I'm watching a film going, but why? Why are you doing all of these things? Oh, yeah, because you want to be a bit self-indulgent. You want to preview all the best technically I mean, film it, I'm just like It's an inc inc incredibly unmotivated cinematography. Like, yeah. this is more aspect ratio changes than, like, a damn, like, Transformers movie. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. Um, I, <laughs> I was trying to figure out why the aspect ratio was changing and why like the color grading was changing from black and white to color like i i after about 30 minutes i just gave up like yeah apparently it's no it was like they were trying to recreate exact photos and like if a photo was in black and white that doesn't even make sense because like when she looked like the dress thing that's in black and yeah. white but that was a movie that was shot in color <laughs> don't like, shoot the you know i'm just saying this is this was a <laughs> The choice behind why they chose to do it. I believe the choice wrong. was we're gonna, we're gonna just do what we want here. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah. It, it felt like it just rubs me the wrong way when filmmakers do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It just felt like Andrew Dominic showed up and was like, what about we do this? I mean, there's yeah. an interview like Andrew Dominic like, doesn't even uh, like like Marilyn Monroe's like kind of yeah. shows. Um, yeah. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like Marilyn Monroe Marilyn movies. I didn't watch any. They're all boring. Who would watch them? I was like, okay. Glad to see where yeah. you're coming from with this. Glad to see you doing the research there. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I Like, I don't think that there is a bad shot in this movie. Do any of the shots necessarily make sense? No, no. But I think that every single frame of this movie is like pretty undeniably gorgeous. I, I mean, yes. My problem with though with that is when you do have shots of a unborn fetus and it looks cool, but the okay, connotation sorry, that, behind that, that that actually looked bad. I, I will say the the, yeah, the, I mean, the, the effects CGI fetus. That, yeah, that it was a bold bad. stylistic choice, uh, yeah. which I sort of respect. But the problem is when you have sort of connotations behind that. They come yes. with all baggage, and it's hard for me to then I mean, say, I agree. "Oh, they're beautiful." Because even like the, the the scenes featuring like sexual assault and trigger warning, mm-hmm. we're gonna any, anything that you've heard about this movie, yeah. we will be discussing. This whole this whole film is a trigger warning. This whole film is a trigger warning. Yeah, um, because yeah, like it's 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 a very well shot movie. Um, I think the editing is is very good. I like the editing quite a bit. There's one specific transition that I cannot get it out of my like structurally it's not great, but I think editing transitions are, are pretty strong. Like there's one transition I cannot get out of my bed, my bed, my head when Marilyn is laying on the bed and then it transitions to her laying over the Niagara Fall. Like yeah. that was nice, stunning. Nice it, it was it was an incredible transition. So like I mean, there's stuff to like, I think that the score is great. The score is one of my favorites of the year. Um, yeah. Honestly, like, like the film's quite overwhelming. I wasn't really picking up on things like the score, but that's you fair. know, like, but like when I, there's so much know. going on, it's hard to like focus on any particular element. So it all that's just fair. comes together as like quite an under unsatisfying package, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I would recommend just listening to the score on its own. Like it Maybe. really yeah. stood out to me. It's pretty great. I could see it showing up on the Oscar shortlist. It won't get it won't get in, but like it's a fifteen film shortlist. I think it could happen. I mean, but also it's just it's a great score. I, I don't know. I I really really like the score. How it uses like choral uh, music it combined with like instrumental and like some drums and stuff. I don't know. It really works for me. I mean, there are just like some of the editing choices with like you know like there's one sequence where she's with like Charlie Chaplin Jr., which like just the relationship wasn't real in the threesome, but whatever. <laughs> um but like (laughs) very very fictional and like get into that in a second but like i mean how it's like the their scenes together and how it like blurs and like smears the screen i don't know why that was i don't know what that like meant thematically but like damn if it didn't look gorgeous like (laughs) like it's and yeah i i don't know (sighs) let's let's talk about anna de armas um because I thought that she was pretty good. I, I actually really liked her performance. I didn't think Andrew Dominic's direction worked. Um, mm. He basically just tells her to cry in every scene. Yeah. And like, <laughs> just, you know, like in making her topless for most of it, just for mm. really no reason. And then her dialogue for the back half is just reduced to saying daddy every other line. Like, yeah. which you get another thing that made me laugh, which I don't think it should have done, but it does come across. Right. As quite... it, I mean, it, it's literally yeah. just, Daddy issues them and okay, minor spoilers here. Why why would you make the entire film about daddy issues and then just give no payoff? Makes no sense. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, we never meet the father. Like right. again, spoilers, but like we just the entire thing, her sole motivation mm. is the father. And then we, I guess we, like thematically, if you want to argue, maybe it's building to the idea that, you know, there is no payoff when your father's absent and he's 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 never around, so therefore, why you? But then don't make that her primary like, motivation. Yeah. And no, I like, think that does. But, yeah, film. like I don't want, I don't want to have seen like you know the yeah. end of having the do when, the, when like, the I don't when know when the mum so comes back. Like, I don't want to see that with the father. We don't need to see the father in the film. But yeah, yeah. I, I understand what you mean though. A- even just like a, a, a payoff with like if the with like the letters, if that was like a thing, or like just something, or like a picture, because like I think in real life the the picture was like clark gable um that the mom said was her father uh okay. and like it, it was really interesting i i think somebody brought this up on twitter marilyn monroe's last movie that she ever did was with clark gable so like <laughs> that that would have been such an interesting ending if like you know th- we saw like clark gable was like the man that she thought was her father and then for her last movie ever before she died it was with Clark Gable, and then it's like this weird thing where like she meets the man that she thought was her father her whole life, but like just 
isn't and was just made up like that would have been such a fascinating ending and then they just don't do that no like no. i think that i i don't know like obviously i'm not a professional screenwriter i'm aspiring but like i think that would have been interesting yeah. i think that would have been but a great i tell you what i bet dominique didn't even know about any of that well yeah well, I just, just, did. just didn't I care just didn't know yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> but I, I don't know just it's not a very well written movie I'll just no. put it at that and but yeah. I don't know. I, I do think Anna Armas does the best with what she can. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I I think she's doing like I think she does literally as well as she could have with the material and direction she was given. Given the circumstances, yeah. So, I, I I agree. I agree. And I don't think that you can ask for much more for an actress. Like I think that she would be nomination worthy. I don't know if she'd end up in my five by the end of the year. She's in my five currently for just like my yeah. favorite. Obviously I'm not predicting her. But like I like I don't know. I, I think this is a nomination worthy performance. I think that she's quite good. I wouldn't be I mad. I wouldn't be mad, mad if it got nominated. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And I think the negative parts of it I think you can pin on Dominic, which like I like most of everything about this movie except what Dominic contributed. Yeah. So. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> you like, yeah. Um, okay. I didn't feel the length of this movie personally. Oh, I did. Watching it. Okay. I, I didn't, definitely. I didn't, I did not feel the length, but I do think that the length contributes to a lot of the flaws. Like I never, mm -hmm. I never felt like it was like, Oh, this is so, like, I can't wait for this to be over. I mean, I was always, I, I was, I went back and forth from being like, like very into it to being like, that's a choice. That's a, that's real. Oh my, that's really a choice. And just doing that for like the back half of the movie. Um, yeah. but like, I, I did feel it, it did get a, a bit repetitive where it was like, oh, she's having another abortion. Okay. And and an, another one? Are we, are we still beating this drum? Um, yeah. So, yeah. And I also do think I felt the length because they were trying to do so much and they did do so much. They were doing a lot of things. So little at the um, same time. Yeah, exactly. But, and we mentioned that we talked about this uh, before uh, pre recording, but uh, the structure of the film. Like, we both agree it's just not the way of doing a biopic like this. I don't yeah. think you can ever fully do a biopic. You don't think grave doesn't telling. work. Yeah, it doesn't work because you're never going to have enough time. Like, how can you tell a person's life story in yeah. two hours 40? You just can't. Um, so that's why, as, yeah, Spencer, one of my, my favourite films last year, um, did it in a more interesting way. You know, we don't need to know everything. We want to know the sort of emotions and feelings Learn of the character the at a certain point in time. Yeah. Yeah, like, did I learn much really from Spencer? Not really, but I didn't need to because it was about the feeling that that the emotions conveyed. The person felt exactly. exactly you, didn't, you didn't need to learn facts about it. Which, either way, like they're telling facts in this movie that are apparently not true Aren't at all. So. Real, yeah, yeah. But like, and again, people will be like, "Well, Spencer wasn't real," and I do want to talk about that in a second we, we will get to that argument because i think spencer does it in a very different way than yeah cool. but like yeah i just hmm, yeah. it just doesn't it, it just Structurally, doesn't, doesn't structurally work i mean like no. other examples like i would even argue something like judas and the black messiah i think works well because that just tells the story of yeah. red hampton over the course of a couple of months yeah i mean we yeah. don't need to see him when he's a child and being like you know he like sees this act of racism and like i'm gonna yeah. change the world someday we, we don't like, need a superhero arc or anything right like that. Like, right and that's what it feels like i mean elvis like what, 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 what like what yeah. is this? i mean that had its own questionable structural features i.e yeah. focusing on tom hanks's character when the film was called elvis and also I mean, Butler is giving one, one of the best why did we need a when, why did we need a 20 minute opening sequence with her as a child that literally could have been cut and we don't like yeah just and then you would have also been able to sort of steer away from the daddy issues whole element that just didn't work and didn't come together because you wouldn't have needed right. that like you could right. have told a really contained story about fame and about uh the hollywood system maybe even yeah Take maybe even like include some of the stuff about abortion even though like or her thoughts and feelings towards having children um and it would and like as long as you did it in a, more, was, in a in better way she was very depressed that she couldn't have children she never had exactly any children. like you could have you could have done that you could have done something think, about maybe she learns that she can't have children take you on the journey and like maybe a couple of days one of those done. four things okay her her time with jfk and how all mm -hmm. of that played out right her time with arthur miller uh which is adrian brody's character the the theater writer you know that her time with joe dimaggio mm -hmm. or her time, like, even if you just want to make up, like, just spend, a weekend, 
with yeah. Charlie Chaplin Jr. and whoever yeah, the maybe, other guy maybe was. Maybe not that one. Maybe, maybe one of the, the other. But, but, but no, yeah. I, no, like straight up, like if you just were like a weekend with like you know like a Marilyn a fictional affair. Just like a weekend of a fictional affair between Marilyn Monroe and Charlie Chaplin as the junior, as they're both early in their career, I think that would have been great. Like just would have been a lot better. Ju- just better. just make it up. I mean, because like again, like we talk about Spencer, like all of the stuff that happened in Spencer didn't actually happen, but it still conveyed a lot of how those characters feel. You could dive mm-hmm. into Charlie Chaplin Jr. feeling overshadowed by his father, and then Marilyn Monroe wanting to come into this world and not having a father, and you know, like, uh, yeah. like how they're drawn to each other. Because like that's rumored. Like the the third guy just like isn't like that was never a thing. But like, yeah. it's rumored that Marilyn Monroe. Back. He got no character development at all. Yes, yeah, but it's it's rumored that Marilyn Monroe and Charlie Chaplin Jr. had a, a brief affair. Uh, it isn't confirmed, but like, no, even that could have been interesting. Just a weekend with them, yeah. like conversation, like before sunrise style, like Charlie Chaplin Jr. and Marilyn Monroe walking through the, you know, the streets yeah. of LA discussing yeah. their careers and their futures as they're both young and to, into Hollywood. Like, would that not have been a good movie? Would that not have it tackled was, it was, Like, like I, there, there's so many different ways to take this. And instead of picking one, they just said, how about all of them? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely it agree. Doesn't work. No, no. Because also, when you are telling a whole life story biopic like this, I feel like I should learn at least something about Marilyn Monroe. I didn't learn very much at all, and apparently, what I did learn is fake anyway. So, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going to do like the cradle to grave documentary style, like <laughs> at least teach. But it yeah, even do like that, at least so. with Elvis, I, I I felt like I came out with a better understanding of Elvis as a person. This like I definitely didn't come I mean, out with a better. I understand. did. I thought that Elvis was also very shallow, personally. But you know, yeah. I mean, it's um, still it's, it's like there's there's more to what they're trying to go for with Elvis than I think. I mean, I guess you learned a couple of movies that Marilyn Monroe was in and who she yeah. was in a relationship with. Barely, really, well, some barely. Of them. Um, yeah. like yeah, <sighs> and okay, let's talk about the shallowness because this movie is very shallow. It uh. It, it introduces ideas and then it's just like cool and moving on uh i mm. uh i think i think it was josh parm uh coined the term uh a, f- a film twitter mainstay josh parm a member of next best picture i think he coined the term the uh the clint eastwood problem um which is just introducing an idea and doing absolutely nothing <laughs> with it and i cannot agree more when it comes to this movie mm-hmm. like yeah it, the problem is with this movie though in particular is when you are introducing ideas like her thoughts and feelings towards abortion, abortion. and deliberately almost yep. deliberately leaving it quite ambiguous that yep. is bad that is right because you have to even that. if it's you accidental can't. you're portraying a political message there that is a question I, I do think we are supposed to be seeing it through her head and her own insecurities about children but it one <laughs> it wasn't real and there was no why are you having the fetus go like don't kill me again mommy like what the yeah. like <laughs> what yeah <laughs> why what, yeah. what what is that and when you're having her screaming i killed my baby i killed right. her ah. like, like and, and again you can do that if you paint it as marilyn monroe having a mental breakdown which she didn't like that that just isn't true like some like a hot she was like pregnant during it and then had a miscarriage after that and like i mean she died before charlie's husband. i don't know it's it, the timeline of this is very strange but like whatever you can do what you want with it just like actually make it good but this is just mm-hmm. like you you can't just do that with abor- abortion just like bring it up and be like oh i don't like it and then like explain why explain her insecurities yeah. about and having also children. like and like yeah. because of it's her not just with her yeah. parents wanting to have children and carry that on like instead it yeah. just is so surface level and it's not just the abortion stuff either when you also bring up themes of like sexual it's assault just- and then just not doing anything with them that comes across as bad that comes across in, as instead of just you're showing it yeah, you're just showing it, and that makes you feel like, why are you showing it? Well, because, because yeah, we're just showing it, and that that like, comes across as exploitative, muddies the waters, an, and it male just... gaze on this film from Andrew Nomic. Like, yeah, it, like I, I, I bet he film. Oh, if I show it from her perspective, it's fine. Right. It's not fine, right? Like, it's still. I, not, I have not watched right. a film that is like so obviously directed by a man, like ever. Like, yeah, 
Yeah. Like this is the, it's just so obviously directed by a man. Um, when you see how it handles this, I mean, oh, only only Brad Pitt would produce like this in women talking and like think that oh yeah no these are they, they both 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 treating this the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Um, <laughs> and with she said he's just trying to cover all of his bases. He's like at least one of these will work. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it just it didn't work. It just you can't. And again, I think that's the length because like you could have done all the same stuff in like an hour 40. And as long as you just like you didn't introduce like you you just like you can leave them surface level, but then don't leave them surface level and then just let them sit surface level and draw that out for 20 minutes because yeah. then it just drives home and makes it so much more evident and obvious how shallow it is. Yeah, so I, I honestly like I'd like to see this film done again with a different director different structure keep anadamas that's fine keep let me do the it. cinematographer I whoever's an idea for one yeah. i just had yeah, a good you idea can you can do it let you me do it, it. anadamas call me we will make a movie um <laughs> but yeah yeah it did work and okay lastly uh, last thing i want to bring up before we we will talk about awards briefly what like comparatively to spencer right with Spencer, it created a fictional story, and it looked at Diana's mental health and what happened within there. It doesn't explore, but the thing with Spencer is that it is incredibly focused. Mm. It it tells a fictional story, but it draws on who Princess Diana was and tells a spe- very specific and focused story about who she was just using things that didn't happen. Blonde is the opposite. Mm-hmm. It's taking, yeah. you know, like who she was, but then just applying that to the most broad thing that you just completely lose sight of who Marilyn was because you're just taking, like when you're taking a fictionalized version of somebody, you want to make it so specific that you can really nail down who that person actually was. But then when you try to spread it out over so many different things going on, you just completely lose sight of mm. it being about that person especially yeah. when what you're doing is like just like so wrong like i i don't know like yeah. it's trying to have like, the like message and like just completely mm. undermining itself yeah and if you look at the things like spencer's like maybe spencer okay she wasn't there at this time she didn't meet this person this time it's not yeah. making up the fact he had free abortions like yeah. that is quite a big thing to just sort of throw in there as a sort of you know, it's just, yeah, things like that rub me the wrong way. Absolutely. I completely agree. So before people in the comments get upset about that, it's yeah. very, very different. Spencer is a, like, I would call it a masterpiece. And uh, yeah, it, it, it just, there's a difference between being contained and focused and just having absolutely no clue what you're doing, which it felt like with Andrew Dominic, which is disappointing because I think that he is a good filmmaker. I haven't seen Killing Them Softly, but like I like Assassination of Jesse James. Oh, I think Robert Ford. Okay, I haven't um, seen any of his. I, I, I would recommend it. I, I don't know. I mean, and it shows that he can make long movies that deconstruct American icons um, that are good, but coincidentally, you know, that was about a man. <laughs> Maybe he should yeah. be directing movies about women. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, and again just feel like i need to cover all my bases that isn't to say that a man can't direct a movie about a woman Pablo Lorraine. <laughs> um you just you know have to do it respectfully and come at it from a place of understanding and like i don't know talk to women <laughs> to make sure that you're not doing anything that's like really well, i don't know you don't even have to do that well you should obviously but uh yeah. just do a bit of research just a, just yeah. a wikipedia just read the understand. wikipedia page i don't yeah. know so Maybe watch you know at least one Marilyn Monroe film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just feel like I need to cover all my all, all, all my bases. But those are our thoughts on Blonde. I didn't, I, I feel very conflict, like, because, like, I did enjoy parts of this movie. Uh, some of them just, like, really worked for me. It has some of my favorite sequences of the year. Some of the, I think, the most well shot stuff of the year even if it makes no sense has one of my favorite scores editing makeup sound like performances there's a lot of things i like about it i mean like if if we go down the oscars categories i like pretty much everything about this except the two things that you would nominate andrew dominic in which are pretty big things um so i find myself i'm gonna land at a five leaning i'm gonna go for a four i'm gonna go four yeah okay okay like there it's it's hard to like give this an incredibly low rating just because of because how of well the, technically crafted it is um and like yeah I, how well i think in it like darmus is like actually just giving a great performance um but just everything else 
like anything that yeah. Andrew Dominic was involved in just takes it down. Which is all so much. But yeah. The direction yeah. and the writing and the producing. Yeah. So, you know. Um, but a five and a four. I think I, I think that that's fair. Watch these instead. Yeah. Um, let's talk about awards. I brought up before recording, I have two very specific predictions. The Arbus <laughs> a Globe Drama nomination and a uh, makeup and hair uh, shortlist from the Oscars to make the 10. That's uh, Yeah, and I don't think either of those are unfounded. Um, I don't think Anadamas has really much of a shot of getting in. Outside really. of the Globes, just because of how much yeah. they love star power. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, and things, the technical things... They're, they're very unlikely, except the makeup, I, I'd say. That's what I'd agree with. And, like, the makeup guild, I think it could show up. Um, could, yeah. How do we feel about ASC? Do we think that it could show up for an ASC nomination? The problem is there's a lot of stuff that are, is already competing for cinematography this year. Um, ASC it is even more than the Oscars. Sorry to cut you off, but ASC even more than the Oscars love their black and white stuff. They do. They do. But, you yeah. know. the only reason mm. why I bring it up. I don't know. It could. It could. I mean, like, I, I, I don't know. The, there's just, I, I do think that there is a is a chance that this could show up there. Like, I, I, I really, really do. I mean, and they do some weird stuff sometimes. I mean, they did Belfast last year, which wasn't that weird, but it was a black and white thing. They did Cherry in 2020, which was really strange. I mean, like, they were one of the first to do, like, uh, I mean, they gave Cold War the win. Uh, well, and, like, really okay. propelled that. So, like, they do some some more interesting stuff sometimes. Um, so I think that there is a shot for this to show up at ASC and be, like, I mean, there's typically a lone ASC nom that doesn't show up anywhere else. <laughs> At the precursors i think there's a chance there's a chance yeah makeup guild, but equally like, that could be something like body so right agreed agreed i mean anything else like costume designers guild for period i think is possible mm, potentially it isn't going to get obviously like anywhere else but i'm just saying the guilds for a period costumes nomination i think is possible same thing for like production design for period like it's there it's on the bubble it's an option it's an option but like Major ceremonies. No, no. I just see Anna de Armas showing up maybe one place, yeah. if that being the Globes. Or I guess SAG yeah. could also potentially go for it. But I, I don't even know about that, to be honest. Globes, but, globes make the most sense. Globes make the most yeah, sense. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. But any final thoughts? Well, as I said earlier, like, great trailer. This film had a great trailer, yeah. and that's because you can show off all the beautiful shots, and you could tease at uh, these interesting ideas. Little did we actually know that these the film itself would... I mean, it doesn't buttons. really go into any of the ideas. No, exactly. The trailer. exactly. So, watch the trailer. That would yeah. be my, my suggestion. <laughs> yeah, watch yeah. film. Just watch the trailer. You'll, you'll get everything you, you're going to get out of it. Yeah. And it's weird. I, I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. I would not recommend this movie to anybody. Like, I don't no. know who this movie is for. <laughs> no. Like, yeah. literally, who is this for? I don't know. I, really I don't know, know who the audience of this movie is. Like, with such an anti-abortion stance, and then it being about Marilyn Monroe, but then also being NC-17, and then also, like, like you're literally losing every demographic. You are. You are. Yeah. I, but, you know, it's, yeah, it's fine. I completely understand now why Netflix, when Dominic turned to this. Yeah, 100%. Like, what, 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 yeah. what, are, what is it, what are we supposed to do with this? Um, it feels so much more like it's an independent sort of film. It does not feel like a Netflix film in the slightest. No, yeah, yeah. But, Thank you, everybody, for watching. Those are our thoughts on Blonde. Um, a lot of conversation around this one. Hopefully, we could contribute at least a bit to the noise. Um, <laughs> but thank you, everybody, so much for watching. We'll have more reviews coming soon. We're really getting into the thick of the season. Um, so there's, we got this. I mean, Bros just came out. Greatest beer on ever. Uh, next weekend, there's Amsterdam, which I will be buying a ticket for Lyle L. Crocodile for. Um, because, really? you know, can't, can't support. Can't there, support. They're nothing David better. They're nothing better than Lola Lola Crocodile. <laughs> Surely, you know. Go see. The I can throw my game. money to something. You or know. Bros. Bros. Go see. Bros. Go buy a ticket for Bros. That's actually a better idea. Um, <laughs> I'll put I'll put money towards Bros. To yeah. See him, yeah. Um, but yeah lots and lots to look forward to i mean after that we got till i'm going to chicago international film festival i'll be seeing plenty of things there so lots of stuff to look forward to but thank you everybody so much for watching until next time stay safe and goodbye